quite sure if you have your cell phones, if you get you know, an emergency call, could you just take it outside, okay? I appreciate that. Okay? Now, let's move on. Have a responsibility to go out and educate the public, uh, the citizens of the city, New York City, about the protections that they have under the uh, human rights law. We have an office in each of the five boroughs of New York City and a small staff of less than three dozen people divided among these five offices are responsible for this fundamental 8.36 million people who speak 190 languages and cover a 320 square miles, which means we have to target and focus on how we're going to reach the individuals that we would assess would most need to know about the law. So it's, it's a huge challenge. There's some tremendously dedicated people out there doing it, and they do it day after day, and they seek out audiences and we set up relationships with organizations that allow us to bring this information, which they know is very important to them, to this population. They work with those groups in different ways, uh, you know, in employment. We have all kinds of employment programs that are directed towards immigrants and formerly incarcerated because those are the two, we feel, the two most vulnerable populations. Um, then we have programs that are directed toward people who are disabled. A lot of their problems not only relate, I think, to employment, but a lot of it is housing. Probably 50% or more than 50% of our resources are dedicated to education. Everything we do is going to depend on the relationships that our employees have with the community and with these organizations. And that means they have to be credible, they have to be available, they have to, and they have to get the job done. Otherwise, people aren't going to bother with them. And, and then we wouldn't be able to do anything. We're going to start. Uh, my name is Glenn Marshall. I'm a human rights specialist for the New York City Commission on Human Rights. And I'm here to educate you on sexual harassment in the workplace. Oh we got staples in here, Denise? And who? Staples in the, in the printer. In the, no. Okay, that's great info. <laughs> Let's sort and make 20 copies and we'll do the stapling, okay? And we're gonna run the same thing back about our expungement law in New York City. It's against the law. And you know Mr. G, right? <laughs> you don't know? Well, you will get to know. <laughs> that is for certain. Okay. Now, I am going to, uh, let me tell you a little bit about myself. I've been with the agency for 15 years. 
uh, actually it's going on 16 years. It's not the first government agency I worked with. I worked with the New York City Housing Authority uh, when I first got out of college. And I started in the Bronx, by the way, which is sort of interesting. Uh, I was a community senator. I started as an assistant community center director, and I became a director with no pay increase. <laughs> that was back in the day. Okay. See you later. Okay. Okay. Tell you like Mark. If, if what Mark say, if Obama calls, tell him. Yes. <laughs> That's Mark. <laughs> We start out with $8,600 a, a year, and then they, finally when I left, I was making 14 and change, and I decided to go back to school. I went to grad school, and a master's, and then I came back. But I didn't, I didn't come back directly to, the, to housing, nor did I go to any other city agency. I just worked with various yeah. not-for-profit organizations, and finally I ended up here, which is... I didn't think I was going to be here, but I am here. Okay? Well, we, we're going to get set up. No, I'm just going to take it. Good morning. Good to see you. Hi. At the commission, I worked in the legal department as an investigator. I handled discrimination complaints. I did that for, for a while along with uh, five of my comrades. Item number two is called the iceberg. And the question is, who is more likely to be sexually harassed in the workplace? What are your thoughts on that? Women. Women. Meaning one of the times. Meaning male or female? It could be male or female. Yeah, female. Females. What are you going to say? Females. Put it on vibrate, please. Just uh, women. Women? Yeah. Women. More likely. More likely women? Yeah. Women. women. What about you, young lady? The lady with the shades. Women. Women. Okay. Martha, you sort of like went yes? Yes, I don't understand. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rosario, you discrimination? Race. 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 All right. That's a protected class. Yeah. Um, anybody else? Discrimination. Over religion. Over political. Religion. Okay. That's a protected class, meaning you cannot discriminate against somebody. Do Julio. Did you have an idea of what discrimination is? I don't know. Maybe race. Race. Mm -hmm. Another protected class. And yeah, so that's okay. my story. Because we're talking about <laughs> perceptions. Anybody else? Yes. Well, uh, well, I have I had two two experiences with them. Um, one was in Texas because my husband was also military. I was married to um, a man in the uh, army for ten years, and um, I was go we were going from El Paso, Texas, and. Uh, I was with my child and I was going to get on the airplane and the man from, I think, immigration, uh, my husband is a, a white man, he was white, he, he is still white, and, <laughs> <laughs> and he went through, and when I was going through, the immigration man stopped me and wanted to see my passport. So I mean, just because of my brown skin. So that was one of them. And another one was in college. 
that one of the professors there said, why is it that the Spanish people don't speak up? Oh, yeah. Why is it Spanish people don't do what? Speak, speak up. up and speak louder oh. in class. Oh. And that was like, okay. that's, you know, it, that's, yeah, yeah. that was, Okay. So that was two encounters that I had. All right, Jeannie. I've, I've had that kind of experience where, because um, my last name is Corchado, mm -hmm. um, I speak English. La palabra conflicto. Cuando vemos la palabra conflicto, pensamos en la palabra conflicto, ¿qué se nos viene nos a la cabeza? Diga. Problemas. ¿Alguien más? ¿Cómo? Diferencia. Diferencias. ¿Qué más se nos viene a la cabeza? ¿En qué, en qué cosas pensamos? Conflicto, problemas, diferencias. ¿Qué más? Solamente. Amor. Amor. Amor es conflictivo. Amor es conflictivo. Eso suena como el título de una novela, ¿verdad? Yeah. Bueno, ¿qué más? ¿Qué tal eh, familia? ¿No cree, que, ¿No cree usted que hay conflictos en la familia? Sí. ¿Cuál? Trabajo. ¿Trabajo también? Trabajo, sí. ¿Qué más se nos viene a la mesa? Deudas. Estamos hablando de dinero entonces, también, ¿verdad? ¿Algo más? La, la comunidad diríamos, ¿verdad? Entonces, Diga. Sí, dinero. ¿Qué más nos viene a la cabeza? ¿Cuántos tenemos el problema con falta de ¿Y la discriminación no le no puede causar conflicto a uno? Okay. Ten years. Is that true? Everybody it's agrees? Always so ten always years? Just stays there. It, it seems like I it think it always before. matters. So no expungement? No. Right. no. Because they, they, they'll go back and like for a job interview, like like you just mentioned one. I was working for S.A. Lauders. They did a background check on me. They went back into 89 on me. And then that that came up, they gave me a letter sedating that they no longer had me, you know, working for them because of that. I didn't admit to them that I did this crime. I'm like, 89, that was, hey, it is 2000, what are you talking about, 89, you know? So, it, to me, it, it seemed like it never goes away. And that's part of the reason half of us can't get jobs at, at like now. Documentations, like you stated. We, we go upstate with these certificates, come back, bring them back, they invalid. Once we come down, we produce them to employees. Oh, what is this? Uh, first they see the NYC Department of Correction on it, they'd be like, whoa, wait a minute. You know, that's already a, a, a red a red dot line right there. And then a red we, flag. A red flag. And then we go on from there. Now they want to know, well, what was the conviction? You try to explain it to them nice and pop some conviction is just no niceness. Even though we're taking we're taking our blame, you know, I go go out with the suit and tie, no jeans and shirt. Suit and tie and still get discriminated because of the fact of past history or present history, because you just got released. Now you wanna they wanna know for the period of time, five years. You've been gone five years. Okay, you're back in the workplace. What have you been doing? So when you submit, okay, incarceration, try to do it as nice as possible. Mm -hmm. Like people, they, they send you these programs where they try to teach you to reword things, but it doesn't help most of the time. They just want to get to the actual fact. What did you do? How long was it for? And what was the conviction? You know, and then it's kind of hard to get around that. That was well put. No. That was very well put and it was very honest. Usually the question an employer is going to ask, mm -hmm. what happened? What did you do? How much information do you have to, and let me answer that question we started with. The felony never goes away. That's the bottom line. The felony will be there. Mm -hmm. And yes, you must answer the application correctly. In addition, I want you to look at my presentation from two perspectives. 
one, as a consumer in the housing market, everyone's seeking housing, whether you're trying to rent, but many of you are, are attempting to buy housing, so you should not be discriminated against. Two, what, because of the housing market, many people are seeking to buy two-family homes, three-family homes, because they want to get that additional income to help them pay that mortgage, right? Mm -hmm. When you assume that position where you're going to provide housing, it's going to be important that you understand what the anti-discrimination laws are as well. Because we don't want to see any of you as respondents in discrimination complaints, and meaning being accused of discrimination. So you need to know what our law covers, the expanse of our law, and then you can take care of your business accordingly. versus M. Fabricant and Sons, uh, basically it confirms that our statute, unlike the Fed's and the state statute, explicitly calls for uh, the liability of individual actors in discrimination cases. So unlike the Fed's, that you have to be an employer in order to be liable, uh, not the supervisor or the employee who's actually committing the act of discrimination may also be held individually liable under our statute that comes into play on a number of ways on the cases we have, but I think the most significant way is that a lot of times our businesses go under while the investigation is going on, and at that point uh, it was a supervisor or still an employee that was a discriminator. They may not be the deep pocket person, but we can still go forward with that case as long as the Corporation is a legal entity, you have to check with the State Department and we can go forward with those cases. Now the law, the commission, the human rights law, well first of all, the commission is a law enforcement agency. That's what it does. Okay? It's responsible for enforcing the human rights law of the city of New York. That law prohibits discrimination in primarily three areas. They're called areas of jurisdiction. One is employment, the other is housing, and the third one is public accommodation. Theater, theaters, that's one. What else? Don't everybody speak at one time. Restaurants, Restaurants theaters, right. malls, libraries, Subways, transportation, you have doctor's offices, hospitals, health clubs, they provide public services and you should not be denied them. Um, those are public accommodations. Those are public accommodations. Finding a job can be difficult. Your search can be hard, harder. If you do, do, no, do not know your rights or the law. Today, we will discuss one law that provides important protection for you as you look for a job. It also behaves retaliation. By retaliation, they refer to an individual or an organization want to get back at somebody for filing a complaint or is a witness to a complaint, or has observed an discriminatory act. Okay? The third one? Huh? The third one is, you mean retaliation? Yeah. Okay, the third one refers to observing a discriminatory act. That is, you ask, the person actually saw an individual treated differently because of, let's say, the color, race, color, creed, which deals with protected classes, okay? Now, it also prohibits hate crimes, or what we commonly, well, in the law they call it uh, bias-related harassment. Uh, Keith also had an intake last week or this week? Or this week. This week, 
Um, no, is a, a case where we have a, a Mexican family who's moved into uh, a house within the last six months. Um, about two weeks ago, or two and a half weeks ago, uh, a neighbor was walking by with a small dog that ran into their property. Um, they also have a dog. They've got a six-month-old German Shepherd. Two dogs started kind of going at each other. The, a woman reached in, one of the dogs snapped at her, and she started yelling, oh, it bit me. Her husband then ran up to the fence and started yelling at uh, the, the, our complainant's son, who's 18 years old. Uh, he called the son a nigger. He then said, uh, the, the, a 16 year old daughter came out and he called her a bitch. The father came out and he said, you've got a week to get off, to move out of this neighborhood. After that, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna burn your house down, I'm gonna kill you and your family. He then went into his house, he got a baseball bat, he came back out and he started swinging at the complainant's uh, van, which was parked in the parking lot, smashed out the side windows and the, the front windshield all the while yelling, you need to, you're gonna to have to move out. He then yelled, I, I'm, you know, do you know who I am? I'm a cop, I, I'll have you deported, and you have to be out within a week. The complainant got his family, got them back inside, called the police, the, the man disappeared, um, and the police came, um, but we're gonna, we're gonna file this under uh, the, the bias harassment uh, portion of the statute for the intimidation the, or the coercive act uh, and the violence that was accompanied with it. Where was this happened? South Brooklyn. It's down. Uh, it's 47th Street. There it is. Sunset Park. Sunset Park. discrimination as I mentioned in employment, housing, public accommodation. And it basically says that you cannot treat people differently if they are members of a protected class, what class is. We all belong to at least one. And if you say you don't belong to one, something wrong with you. <laughs> you must be from another planet, I don't know. But anyway, there are over 20 of them. Now you can see the listing, right? If you get it, you'll see how detailed it is. And uh, let me say this to you. These things didn't come overnight, okay? There were a lot of people who fought very hard to have these protected classes covered under the law. So they got politically involved with the political process, put pressure on the city council persons who made these recommendations, and so forth, and that's how these things got passed. So in, turn, in this case, the additional protected classes, the classes that were added to the law, those are what we call amendments, you know, amendments actually, some that you add to, okay? But uh, they didn't get there by osmosis. <laughs> all right? Now, now let me go over. I'm going to go. I'm not going to go over all of them, but I will highlight several. Now, the ones on the board. Right. So race. gender, gender is is yeah. obvious and race. 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 Do you want to just find it one by one, or do you just oh, want to yeah. go? Yes. Okay, yeah, well, all right, right, right. Right. Race. Okay. Let's do race. Okay. Race. Okay. <laughs> well, it's okay if we want to do it. It's good to do this. Nationality. Okay. Nationality. okay. We call it national origin because okay. it's not necessarily about where you were born, but where your your people came from. Right. Disability. Yes. For those that didn't, are uh, you already took the class, so I, I just want to hear. I just want to hear from the new psycho people. Do not look at the cards. No cheating. Okay. Okay. Uh, C4. Mm. What do you think, Wendy? 
the phrase, but what is it? <laughs> what does it mean? Is this documental or you know, documental? Right. right. What stage you're at with your paperwork, yeah. whether you have documents, you don't have documents, you're in the process of getting documents. Right. So citizenship status. So here in New York City, not for employment, but for other things, uh, at public places, and city workers are not allowed to ask for your citizenship status. Because a long time ago, Mayor Koch said that city workers can't ask somebody their citizenship status. But they always ask for ID. They ask for ID, yeah, yeah. right. They're so undocumented to, you know, they the name. Who asks for ID? So in, in banks? And, for well, ID. right. But let's think about why banks need to ask for ID. Okay. Now, we're going to see that again. Status as victim of domestic violence. What they're really referring to here is that, let's say, for example, you have to appear in court for domestic violence. And your employer denies you the opportunity to appear in court, even though you submitted some documentation, right? Like a letter from the judge and so forth. And um, that's discrimination. Okay? In terms of domestic violence. You lost me on that. Huh? You lost me for some reason. What's the matter? You said if your if your employer denies you. If your employer denies you from appearing in court mm -hmm. after you submitted documentation that you have to appear in court mm -hmm. and you ask him some, some time off for what is called reasonable accommodation. Um, and he says no, that's discriminatory. Oh, I know. Yeah. Huh? Look at that. and conviction record. People should not be denied, should not be denied employment based on their arrest and conviction record. So if that's the case, then why do we have the problems that you guys just identified? If it's against the law to discriminate against the formerly incarcerated. Because they use another issue to say why we can't get whatever we applying for. They're not okay. using probably, you saying that if you say, all right, you're not hired because you went to jail, that's discrimination latent. Outright. Yeah, but if they 
worded and put it in some form or fashion where it's making it seem like it's not because of the, the felony. Mm -hmm. There's other things that you got going on maybe that's stopping you from getting it, but namely it's probably because of the felony. Okay, well let me on to yes. yeah, and Just to add on to what he said, is based, and then another term would be some, sometimes we're unaware of things. We, we're unaware that that law that half of us, we can't, we, we're not supposed to be subjected to that. So what happened is sometimes we come out less informed and we need it like a, some type of pathway, like somebody to advocate for us. Uh, familiar status is just another way of saying family status. You can't deny a person who has children living with them, you can't deny the house. Yeah. An adult. Not a teenager. Excuse me, so yeah. can I ask you a question? Yeah. So like when you read things in the paper and the one asked, right, and they're talking about apartments and they said no children, they're not allowed to say that? No. Because it's, it's in violation of law. Right here? Yeah, I've, I've seen it before. There's like no well, children allowed or no pets allowed. If you, okay. If you if you really look at it. This is what some landlords are banking on. They're banking on the fact that most people don't know the law. That's what they're banking on. That's why we here at the commission run workshops like this. So people can be empowered. So they can be educated about the human rights laws. How they can better safeguard or protect themselves in situations like that. Okay? Now, uh, George is going to put huh? yeah, the website. George is going to put the commission website. If you want any, from, if you want more information on the commission, just go to the website. It will talk about uh, the commission, its mission, why it's in business, etc. It also will give you information on the law that comes under Title VIII, city codes, uh, administrative codes. That's what it's called. And also, uh, it will describe the various departments. There's only two, Law Enforcement Bureau and Community Relations Bureau. And uh, it will describe them, what they do. It will also talk about the intake, the how a case is processed, from intake to trial. Meaning trial, the case is heard before an administrative judge. There's no jury involved, OK? with John, a co-worker. After that lunch, John began to pester her with unnecessary questions and hang around her desk. One time, he asked her out for a drink after work, but Sharon declined. Soon after this, John handed her a note at work which read, I cried over you last night and I'm totally drained today. I have never been in such constant turmoil. Thank you for talking with me. I could not stand to feel your hatred for another day. <clears throat> Sharon was shocked and frightened by this note. She asked a co-worker to talk to John, to tell him that she was not interested in him and to leave her alone. A few days later, John sent Sharon a three-page, single-space typewritten letter, which said, in part, I know that you are worth knowing with or without sex. I have enjoyed you so much over these past few months, watching you, experiencing you from afar, from far away, Admiring you, to, wait, okay, admiring you. Don't you think it odd that two people who have never even talked together alone are striking off such intense spark? Wow. I will write another letter soon. 
Sharon was very frightened by this note and complained to her supervisor. Can Sharon establish that John's conduct constituted sexual harassment? And I say definitely yes. 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 Stop Desperate <laughs> obsession. <laughs> we, have a, we have a psychologist in the house. <laughs> now, what type of uh, sexual harassment would this be? Let's say you were investigating the case. Is it verbally? No, there are two types tangible and hostile environment. I said hostile environment. What, what was exchanged if you said tangible? Let's say hostile. Was it a job benefit exchange? No. You asked them. There's so many different people I talk to. In, in, in the future, in the future, I always ask who you're talking to. Okay. And record the date and time. You want me to call them and find yeah. out what's happening? Hi, is Mr. Timlin there, please? Yes, my name is Ted Finkelstein. I'm from the New York City Commission on Human Rights. I have never spoken to him, though. This is about a, an issue that was just brought to our attention. Okay, I'll hold. Hello, this is Rhonda Bunch, your friend speaking. Isaac Parsi from the New York City Commission on Human Rights. I'm calling on behalf of Antoinette Roman. Maddox. Maddox, Maddox I'm sorry, Antoinette Maddox. Okay. Uh, do you need permission from her uh, for you to speak to me? Hi, Brian. It's Antoinette Maddox. I'm here. Well, you need effects over authorization. I already did that, Brian. We've been down that road before. For? As far as me emailing you a request. Well, on, I got the request for your figures, but what about not a request you? for authorization. To speak to someone, I need to send you an email? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, is it, is it possible that you can speak with me through Ms. Uh, Maddox? Can we do that while she prepares the authorization and the fax it to you? Is it possible we can do that? No. Will you speak with her then? Oh, of course. Will you ask her about the yeah. legal fees? Hi, Mr. Timon. Yes, hi. My name is Ted Finkelstein, and I'm calling from the New York City Commission on Human Rights. We received a call today uh, from the Osorio family, uh, I think, uh, and about the issue of the delivery service today. And apparently it had been worked out, from what I understand. But I just wanted to talk to you about what transpired and how we could prevent that from happening again. The hospital bed. And I understand that you did work it out, but uh, under our law, certain policies that you have, like this policy of having demanding a certificate of insurance, I know that probably is for all cooperators, correct? All deliveries. In certain situations, though, I think you have to have a little flexibility here when, you, when you're having someone with a disability as severe as, as Mr. Osorio is having. And uh, not, we don't want you to change your policies, but we do want you to, sometimes you have to be just a little flexible because at that point apparently it caused a, a real uh, commotion for the family. They didn't have a bed to put them in. They had taken down the bed. I'm asking who could I speak to about either waiving the costs or lowering the legal fees? We can't lower anything if we can, because as I said, it includes estimates. So you're going to have to tell me a different good through date and then I can see if that changes the amount by any. What do you mean estimates? Well, it includes estimates out good to 30 days. So we have to include everything that could potentially happen within a 30 day time, time span. But what could potentially happen in 30 days if I already paid GMAC mortgage everything I owed? 
And even though you're saying it's, it's affecting everybody in the building, the fact that somebody with a disability might be so much more affected by you, this policy, I would, just, I would just ask for a little, you know, flexibility in the future. For example, he's going to be getting some oxygen deliveries in the future. And if, if that was held up for two to three hours, it could have very serious implications. So I, I wonder how we could work this out so this won't cause this problem in the future. Now, who wants to be number four? Four is asking a follow. I, I live with that experience, but I can never, I, I never prove because uh, we, don't, we don't know when, I guess, okay? For example, when I, I leave some jobs, uh, I go to for uh, look for another job. I am sure. I am sure the other j new job uh, will get me. But when the lady go to call to my old job, the lady said me, "Oh, I'm sorry. I, you are uh, you can come." And never for five years after, <laughs> never one company received me. Never in my life. So you're saying the way because I hear it. Because I have a complaint to, to, uh, to human rights. Did you come to the commission? Yes, in that time. And, and then I, 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 <laughs> I go for three days and I go to the office of human rights, cry, cry, oh please, my problem is that. And human rights say, okay, one second. And call to my boss, my boss say, no, she leave the job. My representative of human rights, a lady, good lady, uh, say to my job, no, I am the law. You need to to permit Mata come back to her to her job. And the lady say me, Mata, please come tomorrow. Come tomorrow to do to your job. And I go, my boss was mm, and I I work for one year. And after one year, I go to, but I, I apply for another company, no more there. And five years, no company take me. The intent here is for you to make the associations. So in your mind, you know, if you're ever confronted with a situation like that, you know how to receive or how to deal with yes. Um, being that you, if someone asks you to go out for a drink, does that, what? if Do someone asks you to go out for a drink or dinner, does that mean that you're setting yourself up to be sexually harassed? No, mm -hmm. is it no. I mean, if you're just going out for a drink, does it matter? Depends how you answer it. Depends how you answer it. Yes, we could go out for dinner. I'll put it to you this way. Now, when you, when you go to your new job, and let's say you hang out with, you know, with other workers, please make sure you know who you're dealing with. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay? Because you don't know what their intentions are. Okay. You don't know where they're, where they're coming from. You just know. Yeah, but so, you, you know, the old folks used to have an expression that said, uh, what is it? You got to read them. <laughs> <laughs> you better know, so you better, you better know who you're dealing with because uh, people flip on you out there. But why, why is kept? When a man asks a woman to go out to dinner, right? If he buying you lobster, you understand what you're saying? Come on. You know what it is. Right? Come on. You go home and eat dinner. Flip this. Suppose it was the other way around. That the female was the boss and the man was the employee. Yeah. And he said, look, she said, look, you want a better position in this job? Come to my house. What you think that happened? I'll tell you. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, what you think that happened? That's a So you changed the that, 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 that is what we would consider sexual harassment. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. You'll see that in one of the scenarios that we have. Now, 
Let's look at number number two, and then I'm going to show the. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. Number one. I was just going through the motions how I normally go through it because normally. There's um, nothing left for you guys to do. I already paid Jim AC mortgage. I don't owe them anything but September's mortgage. I understand that. But I still have to include estimates for the attorney's fees and costs because you haven't paid us yet. So when does this stop? Ask him when does the, when does the clock stop? So when does this? the clock stop on this? The clock doesn't stop? Well, GMIC hasn't told us that you, GMIC hasn't, wait, it is off. No, GMIC, never mind, there's a new note now, right now. We're going to close the file. When? So, when? Um, within the next couple of days. Why are you waiting the next couple of days to close the file when I paid this? The just told us today. And we have other files to close. The, the, even if they have other files to close, that has nothing to do with you. I can't talk to you. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Ms. Uh, Maddox. Even if the, he knows and GMAC knows that you paid the money, it should be closed now. No more two days or whatever, because as the days go forward, then that's, that's what I'm it, saying. it mounts, and, and and that's crazy. Well, I, I think you have to say that he, he can't. Yeah, talk to me. I mean, if you guys are well aware that this money was paid, this money was received by Jimmy C. Morgan on heard, Monday. There seems to be, if they want us to close the file, and it seems that they have received the attorney's fees and costs from you right. somehow. So that you must have somehow paid the attorney's fees and costs when you paid them. It must have been included and the quote that they gave you. Because otherwise, I don't see why they would have the file closed if they're still outstanding money owed. So you'd ask them to just leave you that check in perpetuity, so in case... Well, that, that seems like that would probably be a solution of the day. Say they would agree to that? Okay. I guess we just want to make sure that, again, if you're getting an emergency delivery of oxygen and just, I mean, sometimes I think you just have to be a little <laughs> no, flexible as they come. Great, then you're the right guy to be talking to. I'm so confused. No, 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 don't be confused. If Brian is saying that when you paid the $11,000, mm -hmm. that might have been inclusive of the legal fees, mm -hmm. let's hope so. Let's hope so. The other issue I just want to really briefly uh, run by you is, is an issue that I uh, um, can't fully get into because I haven't been to the building. Uh, but there was an issue of access into the building for people in wheelchairs. And I understand they put up some sort of wooden plank for when he came back, and that's what she said, a rubberized plank. If we find out from GMAC that um, the legal fees was inclusive of the $11,000, then you're good to go. Okay. Now. And uh, again, if uh, you know, we prefer and, and our law for equal access is we try to get people in the main entrance of the building if, if possible and if it doesn't cause an undue burden on, on the corporation. But again, she has not requested that as she just really wants the, some sort of little ramp for her father. A knowledgeable representative will be with you shortly. You may be able to save money by refinancing your home. Be sure to ask your representative to see if you may benefit. That'll be fine. So I, I will be there. I think I'm going to just meet with the family on Monday, and then I'll speak to you on Tuesday and, and tell you what I found. And, and... All right. Uh, thank you for uh, patiently waiting. I'm still on computer. Hello? Yes, I'm here. I'm waiting on you. Okay. I'm still computing for the end. Still, I'm calculating the total amount that we received since there were all fees that was associated for this. So just bear with me. Okay. I, th I think I've been up to the complex once previously, maybe. How many buildings are in the complex? Okay. And this is the complex that has the big swimming pool? Have we, have we talked before, Mr. Tillman, in the past? Would it be okay if I put you on hold for a minute? Absolutely. It's okay. Thank you. Uh, available balance. No, no, no. That's the balance in my account. Oh. <laughs> Oh, you still got money. That's the balance of my account. Oh. <laughs> now, at the time of the reported transfer, the money, that was the balance of my account. That's what they wrote. Oh. The bank, they let the mortgage company, the bank has to, they only use in the account. 
Okay. At the time. At the time. Right. Not now. Not now. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's going to be transferred. That's good. That means I'm like, that's not the six dollars. I had that much. I would be like, fine. <laughs> um. A lot of times you got to separate your personal mm -hmm. from what the facts are and how it relates to the law. Okay? Just because she doesn't communicate with anybody, we don't know why she doesn't communicate with anybody. Maybe she doesn't know how to file a complaint. Okay? Maybe there's no, uh, there's no uh, sexual harassment policy in the agency. We don't know that. We're only given certain things in this case. We know how she feels about it, but we don't know what she does with it other than the fact that she just goes on the program to give the appearance that it's okay. And that's a compromise. So what could be a state of fear? Okay? So in other words, it's not a unlawful sexual harassment. It's what? So in other words, it's not a unlawful sexual harassment. It is unlawful sexual harassment. Based on what the definition tells you, even, let's go to the definition. It says, the term sexual harassment relates to behavior that is unwelcome, unwanted, offensive, and of a sexual nature. She did find it offensive. It was of a sexual nature. You know? But, see, that's where you throw you off at. It's really designed to throw you off. But on the other hand, it's designed to make you think clearly. And after the tour and everything, and they, you know, said, well, they wanted to think about it, but however, the landlord was kind of like assistant, like, if you want to still remain, you know, on the consideration list, they needed to see proof of income, employment verification, and they submitted that. And then it was like the landlord turns and looks at both of us and was like, oh, and by the way, I don't take Section 8. And we're like, what? Where did that come from? <laughs> If, if, if the person that wanted to rent the apartment was a Section 8 recipient, right? if that no. was so, then it, the landlord would be basically, legally, his position is no different than somebody that's saying, well, I'm sorry, I don't rent to black people. Yeah. It's, it's not legally different. How can I prove? It's impossible. It's not easy. No it's easy. not easy. You're right. It's not no easy. easy. So let me have this straight. You came to the commission, or you had a problem with the fact that you weren't working in this company. They called, and the company said, yes, come back. She left on no, the No, the company court. said, no, no, no more. more. And the, the represent of human rights said, yes, yes. Say to, yes, I am the law. You, you, please, you know to, to permit Mata to come back to the job. So you came, and you went back to the job yes, for one year. year. And then, and then the problem repeat, and I say no more because I was too stressed. Okay, too so stressed. then you left. Yes. On your own accord. Yes. All right, but you didn't come back to the commission to tell them that it started again. Uh, you could have come back to the commission and said, "Listen, after a year, the problem started again. Mm -hmm. I need your assistance." Okay, so you didn't. The question I have, and we will come back on Tuesday, hopefully with the answer, is what I'm hearing is that the recommendation from your former employer, the one you left, is not good. Mm -hmm. And we'll check that. Before you even make a claim like that, shouldn't you go see a lawyer first? Well, before you mess with the office, and then you gotta mess with this person, that person, okay. yeah, fired, and you know what I mean? No, then you gotta go to the lawyer. Well, well listen, most companies today have sexual harassment policy. It's usually in your personnel manual. Right. So when you go to your new job, the first thing you should ask for is a copy of your personnel manual. If we're talking about a situation of conflict, the difference between the ethnic groups, between the same community of Dominica and the community of Boricua, there are still problems. That's what we know. Miguel and I, Entonces, tenemos familia que, que han casado, o sea, él tiene familia que está afuera de, de su origen nacional, dominicano, de la misma manera que yo. Okay. 
y cada día yo aprendo algo diferente de ellos. Pero yo no voy a juzgar a la gente. Si yo no me siento cómodo con algo, tengo que buscar alguna manera de aprender a hablar con esa persona, a reconocer las diferencias, a aceptar a esa persona por lo que es, sin juzgarla. Porque si no, vamos a estar peleando siempre. No se va a resolver la, la situación. El punto mío aquí es que emocionalmente tenemos que estar listos. Y si no sabemos, preguntar cómo podemos llegar a ese punto para resolver el problema. Okay. Earlier we talked about another subject too. Individuals coming home, how you're in, impacted severely. You return from prison and your former address was a New York City Housing Authority address. And you're told you can't live there. That is the policy and procedure of the state of New York. They're protecting the other people who live in those complexes. Not eligible for Section 8 as a, as a convicted felon. That's, in most people's eyes, very unfair. Who needs subsidized housing more than someone coming from prison? Right. Who needs affordable housing more than someone returning from incarceration? That's why it seems like the laws is being designed to, to keep us, I mean, I, I, I understand. Mm -hmm. And everybody heard what he said? That's it why it like seems, that. and it feels. It feels like that. Yes, it does. But even when you leave from someone up, um, upstate, the certificate that you earn, they don't even give it to you. But let me flip mm -hmm. that for a second. Is the law being designed for that, or is it being designed to tell you don't break the law because this is what you will have to deal with? Yeah, that too, but that what too. about the guys that's already broken the laws? Where our second chance coming in there? Exactly, good question. He said, where does the second chance come in? I offer you this, you can make yourself a second chance. You can make yourself a second chance. We've had the opportunity to work with people that are living, walking, talking proof. Yeah. Living, walking, talking proof of a second chance. You just have to make the necessary adjustments and take the steps and put in the work. Mm -hmm. I mean, we might have to work harder than other people, but it's worth it. Though. You will have to work harder than other people, yeah, but it's, de it's definitely worth it. Y'all heard what he said? We may have to work a little harder. I agree. Because people, the world, prospective employers, prospective landlords, they want to see that you are no longer in that lifestyle. what you're saying but yes. also in this part like what the prosecutor argued that she engaged in it and enjoyed it like, and, and, and and had on um, office horseplay and nice well, it, sometimes it might be you know I'm not a prosecutor but then but it, it would be you know both ways because so it was what, do you, fault what do you think her defense attorney would say she was intimidated intimidated I mean, huh? you, you initiated it too I mean you horseplaying every day in the office Y'all joke around every day, so now all of a sudden, someone make a comment, you don't like it, now you want to, you know. Well, let me ask you this. Don't you think that, aren't there people in this world that go along with all kinds of programs and disappear? Sure. She's no different. People have reasons, you know. We all make compromises out here. That's reality. You know. Maybe it's because we feel we don't have the power to make changes, or what have you. But that is the reality. Okay? Yeah. Well, all right. I'm going to go to the, uh, to the, to the uh, video.
In this program, we're going to look at and discuss real-world situations. Unlawful practices. Right. When I go on interviews, I document the process because I'm a woman and I'm black. So I document the process. Where you worked, how long you worked, what you did, the name of the boss. Questions, questions. Oh, time, 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 please. Time. What we're dealing with is what constitutes sexual harassment. Right. Okay? We're not talking about inviting somebody out for dinner. Huh? If they refuse, then you go to the next person. Right, exactly. Okay? Now, then we go back. How many days do you actually work? How long do you actually work? Right. That's good information. Any other questions? Libel. Libel, people who are libel, is the real estate brokers. Anyone who represents the owners is libel. A lot of agencies, once they get the call from us and they know that we are aware of them, they call us back and they want to negotiate. Back up a minute. With, with a case that may come before um, an administrative law judge and our law. For the most egregious and willful acts of discrimination. They can get up to $250,000 in compensatory and or punitive damages. You know, we really did like that guy. Would you send him back over? But we do it on a case-by-case -case basis. An interviewer made a mistake. <laughs> So if you hire real estate brokers engaging in discriminatory practices, you're being sued too. Oh wow, we didn't know. We thought that That's right. he had this on right because he, he got in trouble for something. <laughs> Back at you, they can't get revenge. Okay, revenge, revenge, retaliate. Long process. Well, our commission is committed to making sure discrimination cases are resolved within one year. Remember, in the state of New York, you work, you get paid. That's it. You work, you get paid. Let me also say this. If you're a victim of discrimination today, you have one year to file a complaint. That's how you guys get this process going. That's how we deal with what this brother was talking about. Most of us make no noise. We suffer in silence. Management especially needs to understand how their actions and decisions may be perceived by employees. And I tell you this, leave it to the professionals. Yeah. Leave it to the Commission on Human Rights. Mm -hmm to determine if you've been discriminated right. against. Our services are free. This is what we do. Right. Believe me, yours wouldn't be the first case where we went in and we proved it, not you. Yeah. You felt it. Because with a case I like that. I have to feel something in order to make a complaint. You know, everyone in this room, we know when we're being discriminated against. Mm -hmm. I don't care how subtle it is. But Felicia gave you some keys in the beginning. When you walk in and sit down for that interview, make sure you sign in the book to prove that you were there on Thursday at 9 o'clock on the 29th. Get the name of the receptionist. Take that card. We have uh, our law enforcement bureau. There's a staff of attorneys that will investigate cases and follow up and making sure that the integrity of the human rights laws prevail. But you know when you've been discriminated against. And the next step is to bring the complaint. This may have happened to 20 other people before you. So once we go in and take a look at it and pull all those records, it's going to be evident.
gathered from the hand clap that at least some of you approve of the tape. But I'll ask the question, how do you please the tape? about the human rights? What happened? Why discrimination in this country when you don't have uh, social security or any kind of AD? We have to make them believe that they can go do something. And this is why we use examples of, of cases and, and giving them actual real life examples of how the law the system works, the law works. This kind of worship, you know, you make that, that but not, not necessarily a personal connection, but a closer connection. We want them to talk about those things because these are very deeply emotional things that happen to people and it's, it needs to be translated to some positive action. Not able to go there and compete and for a job and they will not you know, use that my age against me and if, and if they do, I will be able to you know, sue them because they're discriminated against me. It's because more often than not, they don't feel because they have a conviction record that they have rights. They just don't feel that they should be complaining about anything. And it's, it doesn't just become Felicia and I standing up and identifying the human rights law. No. It becomes a, a lot more intense. You no, know, I have the resources now that I can u utilize to help me build a better future for myself. Now I know the right path to go to. With, when I have any problems, I know how to, to write out the, um, certain circumstances and fill out forms that I, that's needed to, to move forward. I'm really not sure what their rights are. And they actually came to us from referrals from other agencies or from trainings we've given to social workers and hospital groups. And so they don't even know exactly what they're asking for. They're just asking for help. As you saw there with Ms. Roman, people need an intermediary. People need a person to act as a liaison. Now I feel like if I go out there and I explain myself and they challenge me in the wrong way, I have someone that can assist me. I have help now. So I feel like I got a partner. You know, it's like almost, I just grabbed me a partner, a 311 partner, that I know I can speak to in case I feel discriminated upon. And that was a beautiful thing. That was a very, very, very beautiful And I just know what to look out for. You know, just with supervisor or whoever, just with people in general, because you come in contact with people every day. And 
So I would just, you know, be aware of it. I'm not going to think that everybody, just because they bump into me or do that, they just sexually harass me. But, you know, it just keeps me aware. If a person has been the victim of discrimination, sometimes what they'll do is, well, I'm just going to go to the next real estate broker. Or I'm not even going to think about it. I don't even recognize it. But I guess part of our job is to kind of educate them so folks can stand up. Because I think it's important that pe people file the complaints, make the complaints, create a record of it so that the enforcement agencies can do the job that they have to do to make the changes that are necessary. We're there to provide them, provide them a legal way, avenue, in which they're either through us or through some other legal institution or body that they can, they can work to get justice. And the law we have here is a way to do that. So I, I've been here six years now, so I guess I can go another six. If I can, I'll do it. Today, I thought it went well. You know, it went well. It was uh, an inquisitive group. Even though, know, you know, you always, you always have some characters. See, the, the thing about this, it's like a challenge. Because every group I get, I never met. See, it's not like in our school program, but you know you're going to meet the same kids about eight sessions, right? Here is different. You're always going to get somebody you want to meet. First day, or the third, here, the third day, fourth day, whatever. It's new. So it's more like a challenge, you see? And if you don't get it correct the first time, well, that's it. <laughs> you, just, you, just, you just got to live with that for the rest of your life.
I was at it on the books a little over two years, a little over two years ago, where vibrate, folks, vibrate, please put a pump, vibrate. We're talking about marital status, right? After marriage comes what? <laughs> Hopefully, the family's blessed with children before it gets to that point. Tell me the neighborhood you grew up in. I grew up in Harlem, New York, Manhattan, New Apartments. Yes. And you currently live? I currently live in Flatbush, Brooklyn, New York. Brooklyn in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Brooklyn in Manhattan. Brooklyn in the house. Okay. I'm in Flatbush. Brooklyn is in the house today. Okay. I'm sorry, no, you start. In the low, oh, oh is it, so now you left Brooklyn? No, I, Brooklyn is going to always, I don't do nothing over here. I, I was, um, Brought up in Bedford Stuyvesant, but I live Brooklyn. But I live in, right now in Red Hook. Okay. Red Hook West. Okay. You got the tape. I just knew it was. <laughs> Found out, didn't I? Apologize for that. But anyway, where were we? <laughs> this here are the scenarios and the uh, the the agendas. So much fried meat, and it was good. It was you know good. what that says about this stuff? One is great, two is delicious. After the third one, you die. Yeah, <laughs> and that's pretty much Russian food. The third one. She's, it's time for me to get out of here. Yeah, yeah I got to catch my ride. Do it again, then. Then do it again. That's crazy. Oh, that's why somebody was calling. Hmm? Yeah, that was somebody calling. <laughs> when I took this job back in 27 or 28 years ago, it was not mandated. We use computers or use phones of that high tech, whatever. <laughs> so, in essence, we cool. Uh, You will not see this on Good Morning America. We ain't get a DVD, right? No. Okay, <laughs> 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 